Hi, Shelley. Hi, Ken. How are you? I'm well. Um, Good. I, I seem to have maybe deleted the other email with the agenda and the materials for tonight. Are you able to email that to me again? Yeah, let me get them to you real quick. Thank you so much. I appreciate you're, it. I'm so sorry welcome. about that. Sure. Hey, Eric. Yeah. Can you send the agenda packet to Ken? I'm having issues with my unit for my laptop. Oh, sure. Thank you. Okay, Ken, I sent that your way. Great, thank you so much. Yeah.
Uh, it looks like we have four, but I think, Eric, a couple more people confirmed. I'm pretty sure Matt and CJ are planning on attending, right? Um, yes, I did believe I heard back um, yeses from both of them. So okay. we can give another couple minutes. Yeah, we can wait. We don't have a ton on the agenda. We can wait a couple yeah. minutes. Hey, Matt. Hey, how you doing? Not too bad. Oh. Uh, Cash, I think we're good to start any time. Um, CJ is okay. usually fashionably late. <laughs> True. Just a second here, Eric, to look at the agenda. All right, well, it's uh, 6.35. I'll call the meeting to order. And Eric, do you wanna do attendance? Sure. Uh, Cash Chair Parker. Here. Chair Cash Parker. I think I, <laughs> it's been one of those days. Uh, uh, Vice Chair Matt Crabtree. Here. Uh, Melinda Ellswick. Here. Uh, Lauren Cooper. Here. Uh, Hannah Miles, looks like she is absent. Ken Chu. Here. Uh, CJ Cullinan. Uh, actually, she is just in the waiting room, so I'm going to let her in. There we go. All right, perfect timing, CJ. I'm doing roll call. <laughs> See, the CJ is present. Um, also present from staff is uh, Eric Sampson, uh, City Attorney Sergio Renteria, and um, intern with uh, Community Development Department, uh, Angie Bustios. All right. Uh, yeah, welcome, Angie. Uh, first meeting, I think, for you. So hopefully it's uh, educational. That'll bring us to approval of the minutes from May 17th, 2023. Is there any discussion or a motion to approve? CJ moves to accept minutes as they stand. Is there a second? I'll second, second that. I, th I heard Lauren first, Eric. That's what I got. Okay. Uh, moved and seconded. All in favor of approving the May 17th minutes, say aye. 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 Right. Aye. The ayes aye. have it. Just because I wasn't here. Aye, and an abstention by Ken Chu. Okay. All right. All right. That brings us to public forum. I don't see anyone from the public. Eric, correct me if I'm wrong. No, nope, you're correct. Okay. That brings us to new business. Uh, the only item of new business this month, there is, I think, an update on the district designation requirement. And Matt, 
tell me if I'm wrong, I think you have that update based on some conversations with council. I do. Yeah. Um, there's, there's been, um, I was actually approached by um, a number of council members, well, two of them, um, talking about the um, designation and uh, the district, uh, what is it, when we decided to go forward to council with the historic preservation ordinance, we suggested a majority, which correct me if I'm wrong here, Cash, that was 50, I think 51% would be the majority. Yeah, I think I think that's what we I think that's what we proposed initially after our internal discussions. That's right. So once it hit council, there was a lot of discussion, and I, uh, it was then decided to move that to what would I, I would assume be considered a super majority, seventy five percent or greater. Yeah, um, it's almost greater than a super majority. I think is a, maybe a super majority is not quite that, that number. Um, so, um, council, one of the council members said to me, if we wanted to bring this back to council, uh, there may be discussion to decrease that, um, from 75% to possibly 60, 65% as kind of a middle ground. Um, I'm bringing this up to the board for discussion, um, because I believe this is a good place to start that discussion before any conversations with city council members happen. Um, obviously, there has been no final vote on our ordinance as of right now, because that was, I believe that's only presented in a study session. So that would come come about um, officially during the adoption of code next. So um, bringing that up right now to just see if there's any uh, thoughts or discussion on the board, if we wanted to proceed with encouraging members of city council um, to uh, um potentially consider a 60 or 65 percent or other number do you and if you do it's fine do you mind sharing who approached you from council about that um i believe it was chelsea, it was chelsea noonan camp okay uh i'll start and then i'd love to hear from everyone else thanks matt for bringing that to our attention um, 60 or 65%, I, I mean, I, that makes a lot of sense because I think that addresses council's concern that was expressed about, well, the threshold is too low to designate a district, which I, I certainly understand where council's coming from on that, but without it being as high as 75%. So it seems like a reasonable compromise that might be agreeable to, to others on council. So it seems like a rational idea to me. I mean, before I know our thought was as a commission, once council said, well, we're going to raise it or we want it to be raised to 75%, to that was their only issue with our proposed changes to the historic preservation ordinance. And so our thought was, well, let's <laughs> let's take a victory and, and let that get through if that's the only change. But if there's you know, traction for this, which it seems like there might be. And again, I think it can be sold to the rest of council as it's still significantly above 50%, 50% plus one, 51%, whatever that might be. It seems like a reasonable proposal to me. Those are my thoughts, but I'm, I, like I said, I'd love to hear from everyone else. Matt, do you have any context uh, regarding or does anyone have any context regarding why, what was the hesitation on the part of council in terms of moving it from 50 to 75%? Well, I, I mean, Matt, I'll let you comment. Uh, I've talked to some folks on council and I've been at those meetings, those study sessions with council. They're just worried, even though I'm not sure there's an example of this, they're worried after some things that have been in the press in Denver and other neighboring municipalities where there have been unwilling designations by folks who didn't own the property uh, that it would you know, impair property rights, I think is the way that folks would put it, who are on council. And so it was thought, well, you know, if there's gonna be an impairment of your property right in terms of a historic designation in a district, it should take more than 50% or 50% plus one or 51% to do that. Um, you know, 
when we're looking at Englewood as a practical matter, I don't know how many historic districts outside of Arapahoe Acres are out there in Englewood and, and how much this is even a practical consideration. However, um, I, I, I understand what council is saying and that, that was my takeaway just from meetings I've been in and conversations I've had. But Matt, you should comment as well, if you don't mind about that. Sure, no cash. I think you have a pretty good uh, you gave a pretty good description of that um, scenario, and the the discussion was a concern, like you said, about um, a taking situation. Um, there was, and cash, you had brought this up at the meeting that there was, in fact, some not significant but mild disagreement or at least discussion around the topic of how much percentage that should be. Um, so, you know, council went, I think, a little further than what we had originally discussed. Um, but the fact that there might be an opportunity there to consider a 60 to 65 percent, um, I was simply the reason to bring it up. And the fact that that was a conversation that I had had with a council member, um, that they were interested in bringing that forward. I think any time that this happens, it's worth a discussion. There may be an opportunity to, you know, compromise in between the two potentially, um, but also it's important that if they're responsible for passing um, our ordinance and they've, you know, one member of council or possibly other members of council might be feeling the same way about it, we don't want to have any resistance or tension during the vote for our ordinance. Of course, I think we took the right approach. Um, at the, the night that we presented saying, well, okay, at least we got everything else in there and there was no other resistance on the other topics. We will take what we can get. Um, but the fact that it's coming back around again and there's an opportunity to hear to, to possibly reassess that and see if it's a responsible thing, um, felt it was necessary to bring that up. So that's, uh, that's my position on it. Uh, CJ, do you, uh, I think you you had mentioned something about this at some point. Uh, you kind of well, need I to. Would hope, you know, I was hoping for fifty one percent because uh, that's easier to do. <laughs> but um, the other, I think the the overlay is. Do we consider that a district of sorts? Um, I think we have that one overlay of four or five houses or something. But um, the idea that we have one hundred and twenty four in Arapahoe Acres. So, you know, 51% would be still 70 people, 73 people I have to get versus the idea of 80. Um, I was there during the meeting and it was uh, Woodward that had brought up the idea of what about, you know, 60% or something. And it was kind of like, eh, let's just stick with 75, you know, and then that they gave some thought to it later to lessen that, to, to quote unquote, lessen the burden of getting the petitions and things like that signed. I'm I'm kind of for the lower number. <laughs> and it sounds like from from the fact that they approach you that there's an appetite um, to move to a lower number. And and I mean, it, it, is there work that we need to do in terms of justifying that with council, or or are we just presenting a case for for that? I believe it's a compromise. Um, to tell you the truth, I mean, the way it sounded in the meeting, I thought it was going to be 75%. It was done and over with. So that they came back with a lower number, I was happy. Well, and I think we did discuss, uh, present that uh, what other uh, local communities have as a threshold mm -hmm. uh, for theirs. And as some, it's 51%. The, um, uh, the state guideline for it is maybe says 75 percent yeah yeah melinda i i think that um you or i or both of us made those comments at one of those city council sessions where you know we didn't just make this number up out of thin air we looked yeah. at what other municipalities were doing and that's why we proposed it the way we did i definitely prefer the the lower number just it's less burdensome and a great many people that are in potential historic districts are living in what would be non-contributing houses so and my cat has a an opinion on it too <laughs> i'll 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 go take care of that just a moment. <laughs> 
Um, Matt. So, uh, I wanted to hop in a second. Yeah, please. See. Sorry, Eric, go ahead. Yeah, no, 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 no worries. Um, so the way it's what the way I understand how it's currently going to go forward is it's going to contain the change that council made during the study session, which is the 75%. seventy-five percent. Yeah, and my question, uh, actually, for city attorney, is would it be um, advisable for HPC to draft a resolution to council? saying they're recommending a 60 or 65 percent as opposed to the 75 percent and then some reasons why um or, or what would be the appropriate mechanism yeah you you kind of you beat me to my question okay. Eric. <laughs> yeah yeah kind of turn on video here if i can figure it out So right now, it's um, part of the Title 16 rewrite or code next, and it's going to the still on P and Z on July 11th for public hearing. And so it's tied up there with the rest of the changes in the um, code next project. Um, the board could definitely, um, in writing, produce something, resolution, motion, something in writing to council through the city manager's office about what the position of the board is, um, what effect that would have, I don't know. But if it goes through city council, they can direct us, the city attorney's office to, to do, if they wanted us to draft something, they would let us know or, you know, if more action needed to be taken. I would say, is it possible, Cash, that just a two paragraph you know, letter that says with further discussion with the council, um, this this topic has come up for discussion. We has a committee or preservation, whatever group, um, uh, support a more what would you call that? Not functional, but efficient. Uh, there's words. Yeah. So so yeah, I, I think that. yeah, I think that's right. So Sergio and and Eric weigh in on this, and anyone else too. But I think based on what Sergio just said, I think the mechanism is, I think we do a resolution as the Historic Preservation Commission that says, you know, it sounds like everyone's in agreement on this. We support, and we'll have to decide whether it's 60 or 65%, uh, but, you know, we support this change to code next in the Historic Preservation Ordinance for, you know, a couple of reasons. It can be brief. And I think um, maybe the best way to do it is ne at next month's meeting, we, you know, we we can, and I can take it on if if I need to, drafting the resolution, then we vote on it at next month's meeting. Does that sound like a reasonable way to move forward? Well, can't we just do it by email and just snap to it, get it done? <laughs> Based upon the time, I think that might be an interesting uh, um what uh, Eric or um, who, who made mention of the uh, um, Sergio was that was that you that made mention of the uh, uh, day that they were going to be passing? Well, hearing he said brought up the hearing. Oh, the yeah. hearing. So that's yeah, planning and zoning. That's that's not city council. That's just yeah. Oh, My that's council. understanding is that it is going to P and Z the Title Sixteen rewrite. The, the project is going to PNZ on July 11th for public hearing. Okay. We have to act before. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm always well, looking at so. We don't, we, we don't have, have to act before the next meeting. Well, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. I was actually speaking over you. I think you, you were going to say the same thing I'm, I'm probably going to say. So I'll let you go for it. No, I was just going to say, I don't think we have to act before planning and zoning because that's not city council. So that's just planning and zoning having a public hearing on it. So, I think we just have to act before city council in it. Is that what you were going to say, Matt? Exactly. Yeah. Um, the hearing before planning and zoning is. Uh, I I would guess that there's still opportunity for adjustments in between the time that planning and zoning votes on it to the point in time that council votes on it. Um, planning and zoning is simply to receive public comment, um, and and I'm sure their conversation is going to be more focused towards development and the developmental changes you know development changes in the city so um I, I think we have time if we could um do it quickly um to cj's point 
that would be great. But we also have to be cognizant of, you know, um, we have to vote on it. That's the issue is like, I'm not, I'm not sure we can vote over email. I think for a written resolution, it has to be proposed and circulated as part of an agenda before a meeting and all of that. Wow. Yeah. We could have a special meeting. Uh, we could. But if we've got, if, you know, if cash is right, we've got time. And you guys, both Sergio and Eric, you feel we do? Yep. Sorry. Have time. Sorry. Have time. If we well, do it what, better next Yeah. Meeting. I mean, is what I proposed, is that the right mechanism where we can circulate a resolution as part of the packet for the next meeting and then we can vote on a resolution at the next meeting? I would suggest that the resolution be part of, uh, it could be a, a special meeting or a meeting that it be part of an open meeting where people can comment and we basically publish it and comply with all the uh, open meeting laws. Yeah, and so since planning and zoning isn't the final word, and, and to your point, Matt, I, I, I mean, maybe they will, I would be surprised if planning and zoning spends any time commenting on the historic preservation piece of the ordinance. I'm sure it'll be focused on on other aspects of However, next. I don't know, but if you remember, Matt, there was some contingency against historic preservation by the planning and zoning because things were not set down. Um, so they weren't 100%. I can't even say what percent they were. This is, you know, years ago. Um, but there was some statements, and that was way back too, where I think there were more developers on the board than there are than there were citizens. But nonetheless, there was hesitancy at the planning and zoning because they felt that's where the historic preservation was going to be enforcing. Well, and that's been our catch twenty two all along is that we didn't have any uh, anything for them to enforce. We didn't have any powers. And we still don't, but yeah, the idea that they always do. Anyway, I just throw it out. Uh, but there is a there is a different um, membership in the planning and zoning at this point. Uh, but I, I can't tell you what their feelings are on a historic preservation. So well, I would like you to repeat? propose that um, uh, Cash, since he's such a good wordsmith, um, <laughs> drafts something and then we can attach it to next month's agenda then. We'll move or, forward with that, Cash. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, then we can we can vote on it and Hopefully, it won't require too many changes. I'm just looking at my calendar to make sure I'm going to be at the next meeting. I think it's on the 19th next month. Is that right? That's about right. I think so. <laughs> yep, that's correct. Yeah, I, uh, I will be there. So, yes, I'm happy to do that. And uh, I'll circulate that around. Uh, well, I'll give it to Eric and he can circulate it. And yes, that sounds. That Thank sounds you, good. Yeah. I guess the, the only guidance I need, and maybe we can leave it open for a final vote. I don't know this, but whether we want to say 60 or 65 percent. So obviously between 51 and, and uh, 75 percent, it's 63 <laughs> percent. In most cases, I round up, but in this case, I round down 60 is nice <laughs> and pretty. I'm I'm fine with sixty. What's the <laughs> is is there a consensus around sixty percent? I would yes. encourage. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Uh, well, I would and like one argument we can make is that, I mean, we're not the ones that are applying to. Uh, we're just the ones to de decide the designation. The uh, residents of the district are who applies. Good point. And the 75% puts a kind of an undue burden on the residents of the district. I agree. Right. Yeah, and we only ever get to make a recommendation. I mean, city council always ultimately gets to decide. Yeah, exactly. And that could be the justification of this potentially is that if there's a situation that does not appear correct, city council still has the authority to to effectively veto it. Um, yeah. I would I would encourage that if we do write something that we we say it in a manner of kind of collaboration and a matter of 
we believe that there there may be interest um, in the you know as a whole at decreasing that number from 75 to either 60 or 65 and wanted to explore the option ahead of the final vote if council would support this or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Or just, yeah, that idea of saying there has been further discussion, brainstorming, and making it sound like people are being fluid here, that it wasn't a, you know, concrete decision. And to reinforce, just like what you said, it wasn't something that we just made up. Yeah, we really didn't. I mean, it was <laughs> based on based on examples from other other cities. We call and I wonder if you said 51% slash Boulder, 75% um, slash Leadville. I mean, it, just to give them a clue, but What's I don't know the, if that would help or not. Is there another is there another community that has 75%? I Ooh, don't remember. That, that I, I don't know that. I don't know if Lauren knows. I think Golden expertise. has 51%. I don't know. Mm -mm. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, Golden has what percentage? Golden has 51. Wow. Mm -hmm. And they're, a, they're about the same size as Inglewood. So, um, yeah, but if we don't have 75, it's like, eh, don't need to put them in if we don't know the reference. Yeah. Sergio, you said earlier that this ordinance was going to come up for discussion with the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission. Can you just share that date again? I, I'd be I'd be interested in maybe attending that. Okay. Yeah, Thank I had the P and Z when they're bringing it back up as July 11th. Great. Well, I you. believe that starts at 6 p.m. Thank you so much, Eric. Yep. Will that be an in-person meeting or will that be remote? I want to say in person but it might be might be hybrid i was thinking everything's hybrid now ain't it mm, i know board of adjustments going back to 100 percent in person <gasps> so Is it? i can't i can't speak for pnz though i know there's i know at least there's some in person going on but i don't know if it's hybrid or completely in person i would assume it's hybrid but again i'm speculating thank you ken that? i think your um insight Robert. on that would be great that's one of our later topics is <laughs> I believe that um, you know meetings or whatever. So <laughs> yes. All right. Well, I think we have a plan moving forward on that. Thank you, Matt, for bringing that to our attention. It's appreciated. Uh, so yeah, that brings us to the uh, opinion survey project and investigation of properties. Uh, I. I think everyone, maybe except CJ, has has properties they're looking at. I I finished taking a look at mine, and I I've, I've got it in a Google sheet with my notes. Um, opinion survey was not perfect, I guess is the way that I'll put it uh, diplomatically, as we've all sort of seen. Um, but I, I guess where does everyone else stand with their properties, and where are we on these? I I'm have very had behind. A, yeah, <laughs> I have had a very busy month. I uh, actually, I, I got a really good kickstart. Got it, you know, a lot working, you know, there. Not nearly as much as Melinda did, but I got a lot done there in that first month, and then this last month has been kind of uh, kind of busy for me. No, that's. Did you get that picture of the um, uh, Craftsman House that I uh, texted you, Pat, Matt? I did. I did. Thank you for that. And I'm pretty sure it it matched. Yeah, I've been. Th I have an extensive library of uh, uh, books of uh, different, uh, you know, like uh, Sears houses. Oh yeah, and Craftsman houses, and oh. that. Uh, and I found it in there, and it really looked like it matched. That's cool. Yeah, no, I completely understand. The only reason I finished mine, I had this terrible cold last weekend, and so oh. like I, I couldn't, I couldn't really go outside or leave the house, and so it was easy to poke around at things on the computer. So I, I was in the same position as as you guys. So I totally understand. We can, Eric. I think there's no, there's no deadline on this, right? There's no specific. No. Urgency to it. Okay. Yeah. It was just our idea. 
that yeah. maybe things might have fallen through the cracks. Yeah, yeah so we'll, we'll enhance the, the pinion product. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep it. And it's having gone through mine, it, Eric, it was a good idea. Not that I didn't think it was before, but definitely, like I said, the pinion survey was imperfect. So doing a little additional investigation was worthwhile. So we'll keep it on the agenda and we can discuss again next month. And if I may state, the pinion study <clears throat> at least was the first layer of the onion. Exactly. That's so. the right way to put it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's how most of those work when you hire a consultant to do something. They, they, they always give you enough information to fill the original request, but then they'll just kind of say, you know, we could do this too, or we could do that too. <laughs> yeah. Job security. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Have you got money for this next phase of the thing? Yeah. <laughs> so are we going to try to shoot for a deadline? I mean, because I'll be honest, uh, it sounds like Melinda's zooming along here, and I wonder if maybe some of the commissioners need to kind of tag one or two things over to Melinda. Hint, 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 hint. I, I, I'd be happy to. I mean, I'm... Uh, Melinda's I, I don't have to a be day honest. job, so, uh, you know, I can uh, uh, explore uh, via computer and uh, all of all of my library here, so happy to do I it. I highly encourage you guys to do that. Um, I mean, I didn't take it on, I was, but just because Melinda is so good on that, dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Uh, yeah, and I, and I know too, I, you know, I, I know CJ, you'd offered to kind of compile things, but I don't know, Melinda, if like, if you want me to, like I said, I finished mine. If you want me to send me, me to send you mine that I've finished, if you want to put them together, I, I mean, we don't have to decide that. That's a great idea too. Right that now. way it's consistent. Yeah. Cause I think I did, I think I did mine the same way you did yours. I just made notes in the Google sheet alongside all the mm. properties I had. Um, and I was just going to say like, I've had like others have had a very busy the past couple of months. Um, and I'm hoping to work on it um, before the next meeting. And I would say if I haven't by then, then I would definitely appreciate some help. <laughs> sure. So. Sure. Now that that sounds like a plan. So let's yeah, let's let's revisit it. Like I said, we'll keep it on the agenda. We can talk over again next meeting. But yeah, Eric, I, good idea on the project. It definitely uh, adds some adds some value to the work that Pinion did. And it's really fun. I and mean, the, re the yeah, it is interesting. Is fun, you know? I agree. <laughs> like uh, the map, you can get so detailed though. It's like. See, I'm getting lost. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next item on the agenda, we've discussed the last two or three meetings, and we don't need to have an extended discussion. But Ken, I know you weren't here. We've just kind of had people who weren't here and people who were here, which is which is hybrid or in-person meetings. And I we discussed the last meeting, and I think reached a bit of a consensus about having a an in-person slash hybrid meeting, maybe in the September or August timeframe, just to try to have a touch point where we all get together, those of us that can in person with the hybrid option, because there's folks who can't make it and folks who travel, that type of thing. I don't think there's any reason, and I think this was the consensus to go back to full in-person meetings um, or even in-person slash hybrid. I think this works pretty well, but it just it just would be nice uh, to you know like I haven't met you, Ken. It'd be nice to meet you in person, and I haven't seen some folks uh, in a while, so that would be good. But that I think that was the tenor of the discussion last month. Like anyone else jump in if there's other thoughts on in person hybrid meetings or any of that. Well, those that weren't part of the discussion, I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say. Mm -hmm. That was the discussion. Do we get together? Do we do hybrid? Do we do yeah. Zoom? So I, yeah, I, I, I would love to. And I think what the consensus was last time you guys came to was um, hybrid in like in person and hybrid uh, in September. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is right. And well, you were going to say accommodate that? those who travel for work. 
Yeah, I'm in a hotel room right now. Parents who are just exhausted. (laughs) At least you don't have to Skype in from China anymore, Matt. Right? Yeah, I thought I thought that that looked like a hotel room. (laughs) It is a Courtyard Marriott, nice Florida, Southern Florida. Uh, yeah, no, it, yeah, between work travel and personal travel and people who just can't make it, I think it's always be hybrid. Yeah, like an in-person hybrid. So if you can make it in person in September, great. And then maybe going forward from there, maybe we, maybe we do a once a quarter or something like that, just so that there is some, some in-person time where we all are able to, able to get together, which is, which is nice. So um, okay, well that uh, that sounds good, and I think uh, we'll continue to plan on that. So, Eric, if you, I, I look to you to do whatever needs to be done to reserve space in uh, the the Inglewood Municipal Building as necessary for that September meeting. Yep, but that won't that won't be a problem. Awesome, thank I'll you. Add, I'll add one more thing, Cash, if I sure. If I, can. Nice. I think you know, obviously, it's it's nice to have the flexibility of this, but. Uh, one thing to consider as we go along, while we don't have as much attention as, say, the Board of Adjustments and Appeals or Planning and Zoning, but Council is kind of pushing um, the commissions to go back in person as much as possible. So something to consider. Yeah, I, and and I think I, I'm glad you brought that up. I think I brought that up at the last meeting because I've, I've heard that too and, and seen that, that there is a push by Council to go back to in person when possible. So you know, we can keep discussing it, but yeah, it certainly makes sense to keep well, that See, and I love well. the Zoom. It saves an hour prep or transport either way. Oh, I, I agree. And that's why I think at minimum, it should stay hybrid. I understand why um, certain boards and commissions are more important to be in person, like planning and zoning and adjustments and those boards. I think our board is probably one that uh, can be. Well, and maybe when we start getting into those determinations of, you know, yeah, people that's, requesting that's and handling the applications or something. But yeah, yes. well, if we're uh, having somebody present their um, nominations and things like that, then yeah, it would be good to be in person. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, any other thoughts on that before we leave that topic for staff's choice? All right, staff's choice. Eric, anything? Uh, yeah, uh, I would just like uh, to take the opportunity to introduce you officially to uh, Angie, our intern for the summer. Um, Angie, if you want to take a minute and just kind of introduce yourself um, and give a little bit of your background, uh, that would be awesome. Can you do one flash picture, Angie, just for the fun of it? There you go. Hi. Yes. Hi. Um, yes, I'm Angie. I am a new intern with the team of community development. I have been enjoying it so much and learning so much about the way the city works, the different zonings. And I think that this project is super cool because I got to tour the city and preserving things like the Gothic theater and just having a history for Inglewood. Awesome, because it attracts people and it makes it a cool place to live and be around in school. Um, My background, I studied international studies in undergrad with a concentration in economics, and I minored in geography, leadership, and Mandarin, and I'm working in my master's in global economic affairs with a concentration in development, hence why I'm here. Wow. Where'd you go to school, and where are you going to school? I'm studying at the University of Denver, so I'm doing a dual degree program, so I'll be done with my master's next year. Wow. Wow. I went to undergraduate school at the University of Denver, go Pioneers, even though I have my CU shirt on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pure Colorado, dude. You got to do that. I went to law school at CU, and I grew up a CU fan. So I've got both uh, both pieces covered. They don't compete in sports, really. So. Nah. <laughs> yeah, luckily we don't have a football team. Luckily exactly. or unluckily. But yeah, thank you so much you for having me. You have a great hockey team. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we yeah, will. thank yeah, thank you for coming. Uh, glad you're enjoying your experience with, uh, with the city and Eric and the planning and zoning department. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, Eric, anything else for staff's choice? Uh, that's all I had. Um, unless Sergio had anything on his end. Well, yeah, real quick, Sergio, Eric, sorry, is there any speak. information about the whole um, development of? 
the Civic Center, just out of curiosity, anything? For Eric? me? Eric. I think that question was for Eric, if you know anything. Oh, sorry, yeah, that. I thought you were talking to Sergio about that. Um, I am on, I'm on, on the peripheral of that. So right. I'm not involved in that as Dan Perimba and uh, John Volberl are for the planners. Um, so I, I'm not able to give you a sufficient update for that. But I, what I can do is just kind of give you a little bit of an, uh, a better overview of what has been going on for, for the next meeting. That'd be great. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Eric. Sergio, anything from you? Nope, nothing for me. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks for, for coming tonight, Sergio, and your input. Appreciate that. Uh, commissioner's choice. I don't have anything. I'll just go around. Matt, do you have anything for a commissioner's choice? Museum? Uh, we'll come back. No, I'm here. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, oh, come. You can, no, no, yeah. you're good. Oh, I'm here. Hold on. Let me turn the video back on. And sorry, I had to step away just for a second. Do I have anything? Yes, I do. Um, we, uh, the Inglewood Historic Preservation Society, also now known as Historic Inglewood, is doing a lecture this month, Tuesday, June 27th. Um, it is uh, on the Charles Deaton Spaceship Bank, um, and. Uh, it will be presented by Diane Ray Tomaso. I'll tell you a little bit about it. Uh, it says, are you curious about the architecture and design of the spaceship bank on South Broadway? Join us for an in-depth look at this amazing Inglewood landmark. Author and historic preservation spe specialist, Diane Ray Tomaso, who ushered the building onto the National Register of Historic Places, will present the lecture in partnership with the Inglewood Public Library. You have to RSVP for it. Um, but it's at 2.30 p.m. at the Inglewood Public Library or 6.30 p.m. at 2190 um, South Plant River Drive, which is the Table Public House. So anybody want to go to that? What's the date? The 27th. Uh, which I'm is hoping to go. <laughs> yeah. Eric, what I happens if three of us show up there? Uh, I believe the world ends, but <laughs> um, we just don't talk to each other. <laughs> yeah, just don't don't make it a situation where there may need to be a quorum, please. Okay. What about so, the museum, Matt? Uh, the museum is moving along, kind of um, slowly. Uh, we're still in negotiations with certain contracts, contract uh, issues with the city. Um, finalizing things. Um, Historic Inglewood will uh, be before the Inglewood City Council on Monday night at the study session to talk about um, some of the uses for the museum and uh, hopefully kind of finalize some of the discussions on the museum space. So it's uh, it's still in flux, um, but moving along, moving along. <laughs> so that's all I have. Thanks, Matt. Uh, Lauren, anything from you? Um, yeah, just to let everyone know, I already let um, Matt and Eric and I think via them, you, Cash, uh, that uh, Lindsay Floelling, the uh, CLG coordinator at the State Preservation Office, will be joining us at the next meeting to talk about um, becoming a CLG. So uh, my apologies to Matt for emailing you, Cash. I forgot that you are now the chair. So, <laughs> so yeah, okay. I'm excited that she's going to come. So if we have any, um, I mean, she's just going to give a basic overview of the program and kind of what it would entail um, for us to become one and for us to maintain one. But if anyone has any, you know, specific questions or specific things they want to, um, you know, they want her to talk about, uh, let me know. And I'm happy to pass that along to her. Yeah, thanks for, saying, I, thanks for saying that. Thanks for saying that. I would be curious. I was just say, of, oh, sorry. Oh, I was, Eric put it on my radar, so it'll be on the agenda. And thanks for setting it up because I know we've batted this around a bunch. It's nice to have an expert come to talk about that. 
Sorry, CJ, go ahead. No, don't apologize. I was the one interrupting. Um, I know when it comes to questions, the conservatism sometimes of our council on having people from outside telling us what to do is the way CLG has been taken. And so I was wondering if she could do you know, my, some of my stats. How many CLGs did they try that didn't go through? What were some of the issues on the political standpoint to quote unquote sell the CLG idea? Um, because definitely in ordinance, the CLG is not there. So we're still just trying to, I don't want to make a wall or a dam to where people look at CLG and just say no, which is what I think we heard five to seven years ago. Okay. And so the idea is what, what information she could give us that would encourage that community input, that flexibility, the, the money flow, blah, 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 that kind of data. Okay. Um, CJ, do you mind like emailing me those questions? I know you said like, what are the statistics yeah, no, and stuff like that? Know. Sounds yep. good. Thank you. Can you guys remind me what a CLG is? Uh, it's a certified local government um, and it's just oh. a program that municipalities can apply for um, with the state preservation office. It's a national program. Um, and it just um, kind of basically says that we are supportive of historic preservation as a community. And there's um, certain, you know, requirements such as maintaining a survey of historic buildings in our city. Um, and but it also comes with benefits such as there's money to perform those surveys. Um, and so it's just kind of a. She'll be able to tell you more, but it's, it's a way um, just to kind of show our support for uh preservation yeah and you you alluded to this lord i think you get exclusive eligibility for certain grants and things like that right if you're a clg yes that's Definitely correct and they're um they don't ha require a match or anything like that yeah yeah and i we've we've had a lot of discussion about it for those that have been on this commission for a while but and i'm sure she would do this anyway but i think it would be beneficial to have the the overview of what is it at the beginning? What is a CLG for those that haven't been on this commission maybe for as long? Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's a part of it, but I will, um, you know, suggest yeah. that specifically too. Yeah, because I'm, I'm sure a lot of the audience is she that's the starting point of what is this? And why should we be interested or care? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very valid question. <laughs> but yeah, thanks. Thanks for setting that up. Because like I said, we've had so much discussion about it. And you, of course, Lauren, know a ton about it from your work. Um, but it's, yeah, nice to nice to have someone come and talk with us who is an expert in that area. It would be nice if our uh, council liaison could be present at that meeting. I'd... What's that? Didn't hear you. If our council liaison could be present at the time, that would be nice. Um, yeah, we haven't had that's her. That's a great suggestion. Yeah. That would be nice. I know um, she's had some family the, uh, issues, but when the agenda comes out, I can't I'll I'll uh get notice to her of the CLG discussion. And so hopefully she'll be able to attend. Sure. Thanks, Eric. Uh, anything else, Lauren, or is that all for you for Commissioner's Choice? Nope, that's all. Thank you. Well, now you got me thinking, Cash. Should we do a well, special it's your turn, invite? CJ, so. <laughs> should we do a special <laughs> invite to the council to our council person to say that this is very important, that this upcoming meeting will bring up some information that may may be needed to share among your council members and it would be very good if you were here to hear it <laughs> yeah i i agree with all of those things uh <laughs> politically we don't do that though well i i mean i don't think we have any ability to compel council members to be present or do their jobs otherwise but <laughs> okay everybody send the vibes send the vibes <laughs> I have nothing for um, commission at this point. Um, we're not working on anything historic in Arapaho Acres. It's more um, 
food trucks and chalk fest coming up. Um, yep, that's it. Oh, one of the houses that was going to go for 1.1 million where he totally gutted it and just ripped my heart out. Um, he's losing money. Yay. No, <laughs> that's bad. So he's not able to sell it for what he was hoping for. Uh, you can't take the history away and sell it as a historic place. You know what I mean? Uh, I'll learn him. Oh, yeah. Hey, Don't touch hey, it. Don't touch um, it. Real fast. <laughs> Regarding your uh, um, comments there, I, I wanted to let you know that I do have a, uh, actually, I probably talked to you about it after the meeting at some point. I have a domain name, ArapahoeAcresHomeTour.com um, that I've been oh. sitting on for years. Um, if you oh. wanted to take over that, I could uh, I could transfer that to you. Wow. Yep. Let's talk. Okay. Thanks, CJ. Ken, anything for Commissioner's Choice? Yeah, I was just going to share that. Um, I walked by my first historic marker at, uh, at the Mayflower Church on the corner of uh, Acoma and Cornell, and it was very cool to see it. So uh, many kudos to you, Matt, because uh, I think you guys were involved in that with the city, um, and it was just really exciting to see it. So that's it. Just want to share that. Thank you. Uh, Melinda, last but certainly not least. Oh, yeah. Um, a couple of things. Um, is there any uh, progress on adding that um, uh, history of the, the neighborhood histories thing to the neighborhood map that the neighborhood histories that Lauren uh, did so much work on? Yeah, I believe, so I gave that info to Madeline in communications, and I believe she integrated it. I guess uh, I haven't looked at that map lately, but. Yeah, check that map out, because I know, uh, I'm pretty sure that she implemented some of it. Um, but if not, um, we can always circle back with Madeline and and uh, see what's up. Because I also were planning on when um, you guys get done with your property research for the opinion survey, we're going to give that information to Madeline as well to incorporate into that same map for, for the information. I do have a question on that, Eric. Um, do you know if any of the neighborhood information has been provided to uh, Grappo County for the actual county records as there is the plotted area, but there is also the neighborhood um, listed on the Rappo County Assessor's Office. And I was wondering if there's been any, uh, if the city has presented any of that information to Rappo County to be updated. I, I don't believe so. Um, I'm not 100%, but I'm kind of a doubtful on that. Um, well, who would have asked? Who would have presented this information to the GPS guys over at Arapahoe County? That would well, be this. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Eric. Oh, I said that would have been coming from communications. So um, if. Um, See, that's interesting. If I was a GPS guy and someone from marketing contacted me, would I put that information in my in my um, bailiwick? And. I don't think I would. I would just take that as information. So now the idea is who do we need to jump through the hoops on to get it put in there? I think that's because right you found that, Matt. Yeah, well, it would be the, the, assessor. the, assess, the assessor's office. It's and that was part of the discussion early on, I think, but I don't know if it and, and I'm not saying that we didn't do it. I was just wondering if it happened automatically somehow. Um that I'm now sure that we have too. official neighborhoods. Um, that that information would be provided as part of you know that because I, I think that'd be neat. I mean, maybe that's more of a discussion that um, the city has to have. Is I mean the neighborhoods are pretty well set in place, but there is a neighborhood option on the assessor's page. That would know, be cool for me. It'd be interesting to have that the information. Yeah. There's there's yeah. some um, strange things on the uh, assessor's page. Um, just the other day, I, I looked up my own house just as an illustration for somebody else. And uh, while my uh, title says I live in Strayer's Broadway Heights, the uh, 
Arapaho assessor says it's Yale Heights slash Strayers Broadway Heights. Hmm. Uh, I'm mad. I don't know whether you've looked at your house lately and see whether you're the same. Hmm. Nope. But it didn't used to be Yale Heights. Hey, Matt, didn't you have a contact at Arapaho County GIS yes. at some point? Not GIS. I had uh, I had a contact. Uh, I had uh, the GIS. Yeah. You, okay. Yeah. I I, yeah. I did at one point at, at the assessor's office, but I don't anymore. Okay. Uh, CJ, if Michael. your contact is current, do you want to reach out and see if they have yeah. that information and if they want? I mean, it? I would have to say he's probably what I would call the low man on the totem pole. I mean, I'm sure someone somewhere has to tell him. Those are the people that know what's going on. <laughs> I mean, at least that's a starting point because I don't know, I, I don't have a contact at Arapaho for that. Your office wouldn't have a contact? Um, I don't know who the, we used to work with Corey Dolph and I think he's no longer with them. So I don't have a current contact, um, but if you have, CJ, I mean, that guy's from five years ago. I'm sure he's still there, uh, but like I said, he he was truly a worker bee. Okay. Um, otherwise, I can put out my feelers on my end and and see what information they have. I can talk to Madeline and see if they've reached out from communications side, and we can go from there. Because I was thinking it was even county recorder that was putting in all the titles and deeds and everything into the computer. Isn't that right, Matt? Wasn't, you know, anyway. I don't know. Um, the, well, uh, sorry, Matt. Didn't no, I was gonna say, I, I don't know the answer to that, I'm not sure. Yeah, all I was gonna say, and I don't know, I, I don't know if like to get into GIS, it might, something might have to be a recorded document to make it, mm -hmm. I don't know that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'll come back with some information. Oh, anything else? Oh, one, one little qu uh, small question. Um, uh, Habitat for Humanity of Metro Denver has a, a new CEO who will be starting. And Ken, I was wondering whether you know this guy. Uh, uh, you don't? Okay. <laughs> But uh, we we may uh, his name uh, Jaime Gomez yeah. and uh, he's uh, at least a, a native Colorado type person. So <clears throat> not that there was anything wrong uh, with uh, Heather, the previous CEO, but <laughs> is that the CEO? Decided to step down. Is that the CEO of Habitat? Is the, the national organization or the no the metro just uh, uh, Metro Denver. Okay. Hey, are they doing any blitz builds or anything in Inglewood anytime soon? Uh, not, not recently. They've uh, they're just finishing up a build in uh, kind of the Globeville area, but um, and they're they're about so they're going to be dedicating that this week. Um. But uh, partly, I mean, uh, they have done uh, a number of uh, builds in Inglewood. And I've worked on most of them. <laughs> I have to. I have to. Yeah. Hey, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Is, uh, I guess Melinda... we should bring up that public service day, Eric. Um, that's oh, the yeah. 24th. If you have neighbors or anybody that needs some help working on their house, they have to be homeowners, which is unfortunate. <clears throat> but... Um, if you think about keeping the historic, um, the general history of the house alive with paint or, or some window fixings or something like that, that group is moving forward on the 24th and they need volunteers. Okay, good to know. Well, I was thinking asking for help on it. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> That was all I had. All right. Great. Thank you. Uh, thanks to everyone. I, at this point, I'll 
entertain a motion to adjourn so that brings us to the end of our agenda second right. someone has to move it first right. move All second right. All right. moved, seconded. <laughs> uh, moved by matt seconded by cj we stand at adjournment it's seven <laughs> all in favor say bye <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Bye -bye. Thank you. Have a good night. Take Bye. care. Good night. Have a good night.